All right, everybody. Thanks for joining Jesus Name Ministries today. Uh, we're very happy that you have joined and you're listening in. Uh, we just want to go before the Lord in prayer this morning, asking God to be with us and, and touch a servant's lips to deliver a message from God to your heart. Amen. And to the listeners here, in Jesus' name, God, we ask, Lord, that you would move mightily, God, this day. God, this morning, God, through the frequency, God, of this voice, God, that is your servant, God, ask and you believe in you, God, that you're going to move mightily, God, that your word, God, will not return void. Lord, we praise you, God. We glorify you, God. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise, God. Lord, we know that your word, God, is the only thing that's going to stand in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you very much for, for taking your time, amen, to, to listen, amen, to join Join us. Amen. Praise God. We're going to talk this morning. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to, we're going to get into the word. We're going to wash our, our hearts, our minds, our souls with the regeneration of the word of God. Amen. There's nothing greater than the word of God. There's nothing more sharper. Amen. Than the word of God. It is, amen, what is going to take us to heaven. Amen. Through obedience in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to move along here, and I just want you to uh, kind of go, move forward here. We've, we've titled this The Real Jesus. Who's your Jesus this morning? Uh, have, you, have you asked yourself, amen? Now, now, the Bible said man, in his own mind, fills out the way that he wants to think, but, but we need to align ourselves with the Word of God. We need to understand, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth, amen. Thy Word, O Lord, have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, O Lord. And this Holy Ghost, when he is come, he will he will glorify me, Jesus said. He will teach you all things, amen, and bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you, amen. That is the name of Jesus. That is Jesus' words, praise God. Do you believe it this morning, amen? Is that the Jesus you're serving, praise God? All right, let's get through here. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to move forward here. All right, I hope y'all can see this, amen, but... We're, we're going to talk about a little bit of what are you being taught today? Amen. Amen. How have you packaged Jesus? What is your view of Jesus? Who is Jesus to you this morning? Amen. What is being preached to you this morning? What Jesus is being preached to you this morning? And, and I, I say that and you'll get the scripture here in a few minutes. But what Jesus? Is there another Jesus, you ask? Is there another gospel? Absolutely there is, even though there isn't. Amen. That's what the apostle said. No, there is none other, but, but some preach another. Amen. So I just want you to know today that, that we're going to do some comparison studies. We're going to look at some of the, some of the denominations. Uh, and when I say denomination, I'm only going to really refer, refer to two, and that's going to be the Catholic and the Protestant. And the Protestant side of it's going to be the, the Pentecostal oneness. Uh, that's the one I'm most familiar with. I spent 21 years in that, that uh, realm. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and a lot of good things came out of it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not knocking. Amen. We just have to make sure that we're not getting off. Amen. Of, of the word of God. And, 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 and I've been seeing that happen today. Amen. So I, I'm very concerned and, 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 and God has revealed to me. Amen. And I'm going to, I'm going to move away from that. Praise God, because I want to go to heaven. Praise God. I'm not going to be detoured. Amen. Praise God. The scripture is the supreme authority. Amen. However, when I say that, we, you, let me just back up a second. When I say the scripture is the supreme authority, all scripture, amen, is done by inspiration, right, of, the, of, of God. And, and when we look at that, what we've got to do, one of the most greatest things that we could have this side of heaven is Jesus' spirit which is called the Holy Ghost, the promise, the rest, wherewith he will cause the weary to rest, the comforter, praise God. Amen. This is the, the, 
the spirit that is going to bring us unto all truth, the Bible says. That's why Jesus sent it back, because we need it to decipher and know truth. So we could we could read things, amen, and and, and the best we've got right now is, is, is a Bible, amen, a collection of 66 books, praise God, a 27 in the New Testament, the new covenant of Jesus Christ, which is what we live today, amen. We're not living in the Old Testament, praise God. We are using that as types and shadows. And once we get to Christ, we now pick up on Jesus. This is what we follow. We follow Jesus hereafter, amen. And if you're still following that old law, if you're still getting preached that old law, amen, outside of, of just just uh, bringing in and, and, and supporting the new covenant of Jesus, amen, then, then, then you are being taught falsely, praise God, because you have got to know the new covenant of Jesus, amen. He took that old law away and established the new, amen, the new and living way, he said, amen, praise God. So I want to tell you right now that we, through the word of God, the word comes alive through the spirit. The Bible said the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Amen. And we have got to know that spirit. Amen. We have got to have that spirit of Jesus Christ, that spirit of truth. Amen. He said, I am the true vine. Amen. There's no other. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither. Neither. Amen. For there's none other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Amen. Colossians 2, and I believe it's 9, says, whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do it all in that name of Jesus. Amen. Now, when we talk about Jesus, who is Jesus? Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that, that when we look, and I want to, I want to go to a couple, couple scriptures here uh, soon, but uh, Acts 7, and 11 and, and I want to I want to go to that right now and let me let me get you flipped over here so you can see what I'm seeing I think I'm gonna be able to I thought I got this thing set up uh, all right yeah I believe believe you can see it now uh, so again Acts 17 All right, Acts 17, and we're gonna we're gonna go to 11. Okay, so what what I wanted you to go here for is is we are looking that the the scripture was used to test the veracity of the apostles' teaching. Amen. And he said, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So the, uh, the apostles were under the same scrutiny as you should put anybody that would be reading the scripture or trying to explain to you what the word of God thus saith the word. Amen. Now, I, I want you to know that it's, it's, it's very important because this is your soul. This is who you are going to meet with Jesus one day. You're going to stand before him, amen, to, to give it accounts of the deeds and every idle word of the body, amen, to see whether or not you're going to make it to heaven. And, and this is that important, my friend. So you have to know the scriptures. The Bible said, search the scripture, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Amen. And we've done quoted study to show thyself approved unto God. Amen. So I want you to know that there's another Jesus out there. Some will preach another Jesus. Many are preaching another Jesus because he doesn't, the one that they're preaching doesn't add up to the one that you're supposed to be following today. Amen. So the Catholics, they believe you receive Jesus physically, frequently in the stomach, the body, the blood, the soul. Let me get that moved over here so you can kind of see what I'm seeing. Amen. And, and, and so they uh, really feel that the when they do the Eucharist, amen, that's, that's the little cracker when they eat it, take, eat my body, the Bible says. 
Well, they take that literally, amen. And and some of the weird and, and strange things that that the 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 Catholic thing, uh, their 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 uh, way of serving the Jesus that we don't even know, amen. Because what happens is is they call down that priest calls down Jesus each time to die for them. That's what I've understood. That's what I've heard, amen. I have never been in that way, amen. But but that's that's the study, and I've heard and then seen videos of of them telling of that, amen. And so they they do it a little different. So Jesus it does not satisfy divine justice for the Catholic, amen. He does not provide direct access to God for them, amen. He does not make believers perfect forever, amen. He does not secure salvation for you, and he does not finish the work of redemption that's what they is being taught today. Amen. So so you're 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 never going to find that 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 Jesus that that we know that the Bible teaches. Amen. So so when you look, you look at Calvary that well we have a Calvary, they have a mass. Amen. They have a death. So so you see Jesus on the cross and he pretty much stays there and the only way that he could get off that cross when the priest pulls him down. And I hope I'm not wrong in this. I'm not far off, I can tell you that, but this is some of the things that I've heard. Amen. But but I want you to know that your church, whatever church, whatever you're listening to today, I want you to start comparing what we are talking about with, with some uh, non-Jesus church. Amen. They they don't believe Jesus like we believe Jesus. And and I want you to start comparing and, and see how far off your church is. Amen. Or your teaching is on this. Amen. Calvary uh, offered by the sinless son of God. All right. That's what we believe. Uh, the same sacrifice, the mass offered by a sinful man. So you got to go to man. You got to go to the old law. And, and we, we've, we've talked about the new and old law. And I hope you go back to our, our our previous videos and you can see that we're not living that old law anymore. Amen. That's that's rejecting Jesus. If you're in that old law and you're using that, you're trying to mix into that with the with the new covenant, my friend. You're 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 rejecting Jesus. You're saying Jesus, what you brought to me is is not good enough. I, I I'm still gonna hold on to that old law just to make sure. Amen. I still need that man Moses. I still need that priest, amen, to sacrifice for me. That body that you put on the cross, Jesus, is not good enough for me. Amen. That's what you're saying. If you're under that old law, if you're even mixing that old law, you better be careful because you are rejecting Jesus. Amen. So for the living, amen, is, is what Calvary is for. For the dead is what they have they celebrate on the mass and on, in, in the, on the Catholic side. Uh, one, once perfect, he's finished. Sufficient sacrifice was Jesus. And, and they look at thousands of daily offerings uh, for, are, are insufficient for you. Amen. And that's that's the difference there for all sin. And this is for past sins that, that they're talking about the mass and things like that. And and then the Calvary, the, it was bloody. It was it was by the blood that 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 purified us. Amen. But but the mass is bloodless. Amen. So when you look at those things, there's a different Jesus that they're serving. Amen. There's a different Jesus there. Amen. Biblical Jesus provides eternal life. Amen. Complete forgiveness, permanent right standing with God. Amen. When you when you move on and move forward in Christ and be led of the Spirit of God. Amen. Catholic provides a conditional life, a partial forgiveness. Amen. And it it, it rests and it lies, amen, into what is is basically from the Catholic, from the uh, uh, the priest. And I want to go to the, our next slide here. And, and I want to talk a little bit about Reformation, amen. When, when we look at Reformation, praise God, Reformation is, this this was this was when 
the 400 years of, of silence, God didn't really deal with man. And, and as man began to seek God and, 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 and scripture uh, became available, they began to seek God in the scripture, amen. And God began to little by little bring line upon line, precept on precept, amen, begin to open up and reveal truth to man. And this is where you ended up getting the Calvin, the Methodist, the, uh, the Lutheran, and all these, all these things. And you could just Google that. You could you could see all that online, and you could see that the 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 way that it developed, Amen. And and in about uh, 1911, I believe it was, um, uh, I believe Pentecostal a uh, oneness started coming in, Amen. And so when you look at that, you you see that uh, if you look at Azusa Street, you can Google that, and you see that how how that, that God began to pour out His Spirit on people, and they begin to speak with other tongues and and be being led and filled with the Holy Ghost like they did in the old in the in the first church, Amen. In the old in the, on the old ways when the, when Jesus was here on earth, Amen. After He had returned amen and, and he and he ascended amen and the day of pentecost was fully come the bible says amen so when you look at that you begin to see those things happen again and and, and we we begin to search and i say we are our forefathers those that have went on before us amen that have that have picked this up in those days amen they begin to tarry they begin to seek god they begin to want more and more of god amen they they had a a a a yearning, a desire, amen. They, 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 they travailed in humility and desperation, amen. They, they desired their creator. God began answering those prayers and blessings came over the years, amen. The light of the truth was shown. The new ways became old paths. But you see, we ended up in where we're at today with a generation that has risen, amen, that, that, who who has changed and 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 they've made those blessings about themselves amen that's where we're at today amen the 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 older the older generation, amen. We have failed. We, we've we not held the standard. We've not held the, the, the rule, amen, in, in place. To, and we've not taught. But we have, as this generation and the ones before, have decided, you know, it's we, we've just got to get along to get along with the kids, amen. They're learning these new things. And maybe they just might know a little better. And what happened with that, amen, is they begin to have the blessings of God because we begin to see what we were supposed to do for God. But then, then there were folks that the, these younger generation, I'm not just blaming it on the younger, but those that have got fat, hey man, on the blessings of God, those that are that are in their 50s and 60s today even, hey amen, they, they, are, they are sitting fat cats, I'm telling you. They're sitting on in, in rooms full of, full of $3,000, $4,000, $10,000 volumes of, of, of study Bibles, hey amen. I've seen some of the prices out there when you go on to the, some of the books stores amen they've got whole volumes amen we we've gotten so so selfish these days amen and we we we've taught our children we've taught them that that convenience amen the 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 set back and and recline and and, and take a take a little in for ourselves amen amen take some of those victory strides for ourselves and we begin to consume those blessings ourselves the things that god had given us amen to forward on to our our generations to forward on to the lost. Amen. We began to say, oh, let me take my ease a little bit. I've been working pretty hard. Oh, my, 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 I've been, been really doing it, you know, and, and I know I got to take a little bit and, you know, the Lord just says, you know, oh, you know, it's peace, you know, and, and you're going to have life more abundantly. So I'll go out and get me a, give me a better car. Maybe that's what the Lord wanted me to do. Oh yeah. Well, look at, look at all the cash coming in, you know, people paying these times eyes wrongfully I might add amen and all oh, you know we're just got it I got this nice home I'm gonna get me a new tractor I'm gonna get me this and that oh yeah yeah you know we've 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 sucked in the blessings of God and you can call it blessings but I'm gonna tell you my friend it has become a curse you see the altar became greater than the sacrifice on the altar I said the altar became better than the sacrifice for the altar. 
See, we've, we've decorated that altar up so much, which is old law, Old Testament, which we have no business even having it in the new covenant today because Jesus was that sacrifice for it. He did it once and for all. Amen. But no, we're still, we're still decorating those altars today. Amen. We're still sending people to the altar because they got to, they got to get something. They got to give something to God. Amen. For salvation. My friend, that's, that's the, a lie from hell. Amen. I'm telling you right now. The Lamb of God taketh away the sins of the world. And he did that once and for all for us. Amen. But boy, boy it looks nice. It looks real nice. We're gonna, beautiful altars. You know, boy, we get to get that Lebanon wood and, and, and varnish it real nice and put it up there. And oh, well, come on in here. And you just, you just get on your knees there before the Lord. It ain't before the Lord, my friend. It's before man. They become rich on this world's goods. We've licked our lips and say we have need of nothing. Oh, we're just satisfied with the music. We're satisfied with the song. Oh, we've, we've, we've got angelic voices. Amen. We've been training these young ones to come up. Oh, we've given them the best equipment. Amen. We've sent them to the best of schools. Amen. Oh, come on. It's like a saw. Amen. In the old Bible. Oh, come on. Let, get those spirits. Let me, let me feel something nice because I'm tormented by demons. Amen. I, I'm not doing what I used to do. Amen. I just need some, need some tunes. I need some comfort. Amen. Some soothing music. Amen. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. We have allowed the messenger to be greater than the message today, my friend. I said the messenger has gotten greater than the message. And the messenger has been lifted higher than those than the, than the message that it came by. We're too busy lifting one another up. Oh, that's a good, good pastor, good pastor, good, good preaching. Oh, evangelist, oh, so and so. Yeah, well, they ain't even preaching the right things anymore. They're preaching about man. They're preaching about their own desire. Wow. God's not listening anymore. I'm telling you right now, he's not listening to it. His nostrils is no longer having that sweet incense of our praises coming up to him, my friend. It is, it is stunt, stench. That's what's coming up before him because there's so much stinking pride in, the, in, in, our, in our ways today. We're not humble anymore. We become so proud and arrogant. We flaunted our faith and our blessings before those that need salvation. We're trying to compete, compete with, with the First Baptist Church down the road. And we got better music. And we've lost God. Surely the Lord was in this place, but I knew it not. I believe he comes by. I believe he's wanting to, wanting to see if anything's changed. But I'm not convinced anything's changing anymore. So don't blame your dried up servants, services and, and, and those things that you're, you're trying, to, trying to bring back on people. It's your pride. Because you can't be taught. We've got a new generation that, that is learning how to be proud and arrogant. They become rich of this world's goods. They have need of nothing. They're satisfied with the song and the dance to themselves. Nobody's dancing to the Lord anymore. It's a competition. It's a, I got a better service than you did last night to your, to your local assemblies. Amen. Which is a stench to God's nostrils. He said, you hypocrites. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching to the doctrines, the commandments of men. A stain on their garments that will not come clean. 
will not wash off. That's no place to be, my friend. You have got to find the real Jesus. You're wasting your time. He's not even listening in to your, to your, to your, to your prayers anymore. When we get off of those things. Read Romans 11. When we talk about Romans 11, he said this is where, where the, the, we were grafted in. Amen. The, the true vine, the, the olive branch of Israel began to be the same way, proud, arrogant, whoring after other gods. Amen. Looking at the things that they could see and not the faith that they needed to apply in God. They went away. They were carried away. God gave them over to reprobate minds. God delivered them into the hands of their enemies. You know what's most scary? Is to know or not know when God has just let go of you. I want, I want correction. When I don't hear from God, when I'm not, not being, being corralled or, or, or moved and saying, hey, you know, we got to do a little better here. We got to do a little better there. Here's the word of the Lord. Here's thus saith the word of God. When I can't find him, he said, feel after me that happily you might find me. Amen. When I can't find him, I get a little worried. I get a little scared. And I say, oh God, where are you at? I need a touch from you. I just need you a brush. Amen. Just, just, just something. I'll take some correction. I'll take whatever. But I just want to know you're there with me. I just want to know that, that I can feel you. Amen. That, that, that you're here. Amen. That's what I want. Amen. And as long as he's around. And I'll take that attention any way I can get it because it's a love, amen, that he reaches down to me for, amen, or with, amen, praise God. And I'll tell you, that's the worst thing we can have, that we know not that he was even here, amen, that we couldn't even feel him, amen, that he came by, but we knew it not, amen. That's a scary place to be in. And I want to say today, amen, that that. If we are not going to produce that fruit of the vine, amen. If we do not show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. If we do not become the salt of the earth, amen. We're going to lose even that which we have, amen. And we'll not even know it. He said, don't you know? that I am the true vine. Amen. And you see, Paul talked to us. Jesus talked to us in, in, in John 15, telling us how he was the true vine and that nobody's getting to the Father but by him. Amen. But, but you see, Romans 11, Paul says he cut off his own. He cut off his own people because they weren't producing. And he said, know ye not that ye as Gentiles were grafted in. You, you don't even belong on, on, on a part of that tree trunk. We didn't, we didn't even belong there. We weren't the chosen people. But because, amen, that their, they, they, their, their disobedience and their unbelief, God turned to another people. Do you understand what's happening here? You understand what God will do if we decide not to produce anymore. He said, no, you're not, that the, 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 his own were cut off. He said, and how easy, how much greater would you be cut off who was not even supposed to be part of the vine? He said, let's fear that that won't happen to you. We have to be about our Father's business. We've got to produce fruit. We were grafted in. God turned again through the Reformation. He turned again, and, and he heard our cries, and he started pouring out of his spirit again. 
And we beheld his glory. Amen. We begin to feel after him and we begin to touch him. He began to touch us. He began to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. With that great evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. I don't know another language. I can't even speak much Spanish. Amen. Amen. I've, I've took French, but I can't speak French either. But I'm telling you, when I get in that holy worship to the Lord, when my heart's clean, amen, and my spirit's humble, amen, and I reach for him, and I begin to praise him and give him the glory and the honor and the thanksgiving, oh, that spirit comes on me, amen, he begins to speak, amen, he said he said that, that the words uttering, amen, that you can't even utter, amen, it, it will make intercession for you, amen, I praise God for that intercession, amen, he said, for you know not what you need to pray for for yourself, but the Spirit itself, amen, maketh intercession, amen. It talks to God and says, hey, here's what I need, amen. It begins to reach out, amen, that Spirit, amen. I thank God for that, amen, and you have got to have that Spirit to navigate truth. It will not take long before you're off the track with not only man, but not even, not only the devil, but man. And I want you to know something right now, that man, <laughs> he's talking about doctrines of devils. Paul talked about doctrines of devils. Amen, not being deceived, but I'm gonna tell you what is, is, is most important, amen. What is greater than a doctrine of a devil is that doctrine of man. Do you know that there is more that he said about man deceiving you than he did the devil himself? You see, the devil came in, in, in the garden and said, basically, he, he just worked on the, your own desires that, that, that they had. Oh, the pride of life, right? The, the eye to make one wise and, and, you know, to build self up. Yeah, that's all, all the devil had to point to, really. But see, man in himself, what will err? Man will cause you to err. And I want you to know we we've got we've got some some stuff here. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh let me let me move on here. The Reformation. I want to talk a little bit here. We've got to get going here. So it talks about 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. And let me, let me see if I can get that up there. All right, 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. Let's go there. Amen. He said, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Did you know that people are out there, men are trying to allure you into another gospel? Did you know they're trying to teach you another Jesus? Did you know there's all kinds of uh, religion out there that is that is way off of what God says Jesus is, what the Bible teaches us? Who's the real Jesus? See, this is where the only way you're going to know the real Jesus is by reading the word and allowing the spirit to help guide you to the spirit of truth. Man will deceive you. They will pull scriptures out and make it their way. What's the Bible say about the way of man? Leads to death. He said, by the which we are sanctified. This is in red up here. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hebrews 10 and 10. Now the old Catholic law, the Catholics, they're 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 the they go on the old law of Moses is still in force with them. Man must go through a priest. 
the office is greater than Jesus. The priest is able to call down Jesus and have him personally sacrifice his body again for your sins via the Eucharist. When you break that cracker, the priest has called Jesus down. That's what they teach. At least that's what the video said that the guy that had, had came in from the Catholic for most of his life, that's what he, he said. And I'm just, just letting you know what he said. Jesus did not satisfy divine grace. He did not provide direct access to God. This is what they believe. This is what they teach. He does not make believers perfect or secure salvation for you. That's their teaching. Only the priest can make your connection to God. Now, if you're a Bible reader, you've already got bells and whistles going off like crazy right now. They're a multi-tiered hierarchy you got the Pope, who is equal to the Apostle Peter, actually probably higher than him at this point, because they have the authority to change the gospel. This very Pope, I believe it's no more than a couple years, less than a couple years ago, came out and, and, and did some changing. It's the magisterium which is the Popes and Bishops have total control of Scripture interpretation. Tradition takes authority over scripture. That's their hierarchy in, in, in their modes and, and their teaching. You got the popes, the bishops, and the priest. The sacraments, they've got the mass, Mary, penance, and purgatory. Now, let's look at your church. Now, the one that I know best has been the, the one this United Pentecostal Church. And that's all I can speak to. I haven't been in any other religions. But I can see some very close resemblings. So the, the Protestant, which means anything but Catholic, the oneness Pentecostal, the old law, is still in force. That's what's preached today. They're mixing the old wine with the new wine. They're taking that new wine and putting it in an old bottle. And Jesus said that ain't going to work. But that's what's being preached today. Amen. That's what's being preached. Man must go through the pastor. The office is greater than Jesus. The pastor is a covering for you. That's what they're teaching. I've heard it with my own ear. I'm not making this up. This isn't secondhand. I've watched the videos. I've sat in the services. I hear this. It's not just one church. It's other churches. It's across states. I'm Texas, Florida, Indiana, Michigan. I, I've got, literally, I have evidence of these preachings. The pastor's a covering for you. He or she becomes your atonement. That's what that means. Now, they'll sit there and say, oh, no, we don't mean it like that. Yeah, you do. Those words ain't wrong. If you're using them, that's what they mean. You, you want people to look up to you as a man, as a human, and, and, and you want them to, to think that you're up higher than them, that, that they are something great, that they can go to God for you. That's exactly what your motive is. So you can you can you can put it, you can wrap it in candy, you know, wrap it all any way you want. You can put whatever color you want on that wrapper, but that's exactly what your motive is. Quit fooling yourself. Grace can be eliminated if you're not in obedience to your pastor. Don't tell me, you know, you, you could put that out there on, on World Apostolic and people sit there and argue with you and everything else. You 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 could say Jesus had a devil on there, and, and you would get less flack than if you said, your pastor's wrong. Boy, you talk about people coming out of the woodwork. They're all over you. Man, they're nasty. You say something about a pastor, you could say Jesus has a devil, and he was he was operating in, 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 through, through bad spirit or something, and they'd be less getting on you than if you talked about their pastor. Now, you tell me what that means. They're being taught that that pastor is greater than Jesus. 
is that you are separated from Jesus Christ and you must make amends to be back into God's grace again with that pastor. The pastor has divine authority to exclude you from the kingdom of God and banish you from fellowship with the brethren and other churches. Permission needed. I've seen, I've seen, it's, it's probably still in existence. I haven't had a, a, a good news update, but I know churches that are against churches. You don't fellowship with them. They don't come over here. You don't go over there. Don't you be calling them. Well, they don't need to know our business and all this. What kind of, what, what is that garbage? Is that Jesus? Is that the Jesus you're serving? Because he's not the one in my Bible. Go ahead. Now I'm talking about a UPC people and organizations that are full-fledged. So you can say what you want. This is fact. This is not some made up and oh, I would just want to pick on somebody. No, this is what's real. And many of you know it. But still you set in those. You don't try to write those things. You just sit there and suck it down. When are you going to stand up for Jesus? When are you going to say enough is enough and change your generation? You're going to let your kids walk right into the same stuff that you're dealing with? If you don't get up off that pew, if you don't get down off of that platform and quit playing patty cake with Jesus and sit there and keep going along with everything that the man of God, so the, <laughs> that the false man of God is sitting there teaching and preaching, you're part of it. Pastors here have a theocracy. They have more authority than what I read the apostles had in the church structure in the Bible. They receive a wage. Paul wouldn't take a wage. He said he wanted to work with his hands. He didn't want anybody to say, hey, you're just doing it for money. He had enough scruples about him. Now, did he eat a meal that somebody cooked? I'm sure he did. It's not about that. Wasn't going out buying him a new new horse or anything or camel. Minimal accountability to these pastors, period. None in most cases. Zero. Say and do whatever they want. They can they can sit there and teach whatever they want. There's no accountability. And if you as 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 a, a lay lay person, and that's the other thing, but you as a lay person go up and say, oh, you know, well, the Lord said this, and or I have a word of the Lord for you. You don't have nothing for them because you can't speak to them. They're, they're way above you. And they determine who's saved within that church. They're, you're, you're the, oh, well, so-and-so is doing good. Oh, you're not doing so good. You know, I didn't approve of that. And you, you really, who are, the, who are you? Who do you think you are? You are outside of the Jesus I know. They're a theocratic rule. By divine rule as the Catholic tradition. If God speaks to you, and I've heard this said, I've got videos of it, I've got recordings of it, I got audio of it. Amen. They're saying that if God speaks to you, it'll be through your pastor. Now you tell me what religion is more close than that kind of stuff to a Catholic church of a priest. Altars, ties, ties. You got to pay your 10%. You know what? The lady with the one mite, she wouldn't have been able to vote in the church. No, she wouldn't have been able to have a vote, a say in the church at all. Because you know what? She didn't have enough money there. She didn't pay 10%. Which is wrong. It's not even for our new covenant. It was for Levitical priesthood. And, and even, even if you were in the old law, you probably weren't part of that people that was supposed to pay tithes. Jacob made a, a commitment to God on his own. That didn't propel anything forward for everybody else. Tithes weren't even ever instituted in the new covenant. You'll find nobody in there paying tithing to, to, to any church or any man or pastor in the New Testament. You know why? Because it's done away with. The old law is gone. 
You can you can you can get with me, message me. I'll give you plenty of scripture for it. You're in that old law. Not a good place to be. All right, some more stuff here. Utterly dependent upon priest, the Catholic Church. The priest baptizes for regeneration justification. We're to be baptized. We know that. We'll jump over that in a minute. Priest hears confession and absolves sin. Since when can man absolve sin? Priest offers the body and blood of Jesus in the Eucharist. Priest imparts the Holy Spirit in confirmation. Priest gives last rites. You know when you die, if they don't come and read you your last rites. Now, I hear that JFK, they would not uh, pronounce him dead until a priest got there after he was assassinated. Not only does not teach the doctrine of assurance of salvation, it preaches and teaches against it. Why? The explanation is quite simple. As long as you are uncertain, you are dependent upon the church and are dependent upon priests. If you have assurance of salvation, you do not need a priest. You do not need the help of Virgin Mary or the works of uh, supererogation of the saints. You go directly. Excuse me. So that's what they believe. And you know what? We're not far off. When I say we, I'm not, I'm not part of that anymore. I left that. But they're not far off from the UPC either. Because if you ain't pleasing your pastor, you ain't pleasing God. And, 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 and if, 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 if God don't speak through your pastor, it's not God. Wow. All right. So our condition is sin. And sin equals death. Romans says all our righteousness is as filthy rags before the sight of God. We have a dilemma. The gospel is the way to salvation. Coming to Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Righteousness in Christ is inheritance of obedience to Christ and not man. John 3, 1 through 9, Jesus said, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit to go to heaven. You could read that on your own. He said that you would hear a sound and the wind would blow. Those were all things that he wanted us to know that would happen for our assurance that we have got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he said, verse 8, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You're going you're gonna to have that experience. Amen. The Bible said in Isaiah, I think it's 28 and 11, that with, with another tongue, uh, he will speak to this people with a new tongue. Amen. Luke 24 and 49, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And then the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 and 1 was fully come. Amen. It said, suddenly there came a sound. There's that sound that he talked about in John 3. Amen. From heaven as of a Russian mighty wind. He talked about that sound and the wind. Amen. Would listeth where it blows, you don't know. He talked about that. He gave hints about this when it came. And, and the Bible said, we do hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of God in Acts 2 and 11. Amen. These men, the Bible said, that they were full of new wine, those that heard them. And Peter said, these are not drunken as you suppose, but this, as, as you see that it's about the, about the uh, ninth hour to the nine o'clock in the day. Amen. So anyhow, but this is that, Peter said, was, was spoken by the prophet Joel. And now you'll find that in 228 that he, he quoted. Amen. And he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. All flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. They'll dream dreams. Amen. Your old men, your young ones will see visions. Amen. So I want you to know when we look at that. And I want to go here. The gospel harmony 
of not having authority over one another. I want to touch on that today. Amen. Matthew 20, 25 and 26. Jesus, I want you to read those. Uh, you you got to know for yourself. Amen. You got to know the Jesus you got to serve. Amen. This Jesus does not go along with those other things that we were talking about with the, with the Catholic and the, and the UPC and the, the other uh, Protestant churches. Jesus ain't on with this. He's not on board with that. And I'm telling you right now, his words will judge us. The, what do he say? The thing that formed it is not less than the thing formed. Amen. And I'll tell you today, we got to understand that we're going to stand before Jesus. He said, my words will judge you in the last day. Amen. So when you look at Matthew 20, 25 and 26, he said, you're not going to act like the Gentiles. There's not going to be somebody above you. But you know what? This UPC and these, these churches, they have, they have a different level. They have a ministry. There's a two-tiered system there. There's a ministry, and then they have the lay people. They have the saints who are born again, who have the same spirit that they got. But somehow, they're trying to elevate themselves just like the scribes and Pharisees that Jesus talks about in Matthew 23. Read that. If, if your church looks like that, you need to get out of there. You need to rebuke them. You need to say, hey, listen here. If y'all ain't gonna, gonna tighten down with what the Bible says, I'm not gonna come here. You're not getting any more of my money, my offerings. And I hope you're not paying tithes because that's wrong. If you are, you're, 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 you're biting into the old law and you're rejecting Jesus. Now you may think, oh, well, it's good. It's a good thing. No, you give, you give offerings is fine. If you, God loveth a cheerful giver. I'm not saying you can't give the church anything. You can't give things, but I'm telling you right now, if you're painted in the form of tithes and obedience to some old law that the Lord moved away, got rid of, you're, you're rejecting Jesus. All right, Mark 10, 24, 44. Here we go again. The harmony of the Gospels right here. Three Gospels, three harmonic scriptures. Shall it not be among you? What is he saying? He's saying that you're not going to have different levels in the church. Not in my kingdom. So if you're playing that game, you're, you're out of the will of God. You're out of the word of God. Amen. And Luke 22, 25, 26 shall not be among you. Read it for yourself. 28 or Matthew 22 23 and 8 he said be not called rabbi or master only Christ is your master and all ye are brethren everybody's on the same playing field Paul said you're neither bond nor free rich or poor male nor female and read your Bible we, we've got to start obeying amen he said, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. And this is Matthew 23, 16 coming up. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye, be, if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Amen. So that was John 13, 15 through 17. Sorry. Being seduced, 1 John 2 and 26, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man should teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So now you see some of the scripture that totally goes against what's going on. Let me tell you about the real Jesus. Let's talk about him. See, you're not, you're not finding man that the head of every man is Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. And the head of the woman is the man, and that's that he's talking about the family structure here. And he's also talking about if if there is he's talking about the hierarchy in God, in God's kingdom. All right. And the head of Christ is God. All right. So this came not by man, 
The new covenant of Jesus is what we're living in. So when you look at the Bible, not the Catholic Church, not the denominal churches, but when you read the Bible, Jesus, who is above all, the chief cornerstone of the church, which is the body of Christ, the apostles laying the foundation as directed by Jesus' teaching. Do you remember what we just read back there? Let's go back. Do you remember what we just read? The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. So keep that in mind when you read scripture. If Jesus said this, and you have another scripture somewhere that was written down, listen to the Holy Ghost that's going to guide you to truth. Jesus is not lying. And this is, this is something I want to go back to. And I, 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 I want to make sure that you understand that if, if you want to play roles against the Gospels versus the epistles, the letters of the church, amen, that Paul wrote, that, that Peter wrote, the, 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 the letters to Timothy, Thessalonians, and all these. If you, want, if you want to play back and forth with this, let me just let me just warn you something right now. The four gospels, if they're not right, you might as well throw all Paul's stuff away. Because everything that he's talking about is Jesus. That's in there. So if that's wrong, my friend, we're in trouble. Because nothing Paul says is supported unless there's gospels. So let me just tell you that right now. So when you want to pit something that Jesus said in three different books with three different writers and, and, and three different instances, at least two different instances, I'll give you that, that Matthew may have been written a little bit off of Mark. Maybe it was pulled from there, but Luke wasn't, wasn't named like that. So there's at least two, two or three immutable things. The Bible said, let it be established. Let every word be established. So, so at the mouth of two or three witnesses, the Bible says, so, so when you look at that and you're going to sit there and, and, and act like that Matthew 20, 25, 26, Luke 22, 25, and 26 don't mean anything when, when, when somebody comes back and said, obey them that have the rule over you. You think, you think the Lord's going to back off of that and let somebody else be your man instead of Christ? If he was going to do that, he would have just put Moses beside him. I'm pretty sure Moses had more credit. Be careful. Be warned. So here you are. The saints building upon that foundation laid by Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Salvation only comes by Jesus Christ. It won't come by your pastor. It doesn't come by Paul. God gave Peter the words to say in that moment. He did not give Peter indefinite authority after that. Because Peter would have never quiesced to Paul if that was the case. And Paul would have had no right to charge Peter wrong in Acts if that was the case. But that's not the case. We know that because it makes sense. And the Holy Ghost will confirm it for you. Amen. So righteousness is only obtained through Jesus being led by his spirit, the Holy Ghost, to obtain salvation. Acts 4 and 12, we've already quoted it. Neither is there salvation in any, in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, how is Jesus making that statement? And then you want to say, oh, my pastor is the under shepherd. He got, Jesus don't need no under shepherd. If you have the spirit of Christ in you, you have direct communication with him. Why would he need your pastor to tell you something? He wouldn't. He has access. We have access. We have communication to him. That's why he died and said the Holy Ghost would come back and be in you. 
Are you rejecting the Holy Ghost when you go to man? I believe you are. If you're buying that line of soup, God help you. It says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead, Colossians 2, 8 through 12. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. You want some man who has not went to heaven? Jesus died and rose again. That's who I want representing me. He shed his blood for me. No man was able to do it or he wouldn't have had to come himself. <coughs> Excuse me. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, our feelings, our pain, but was in all points tempted like as we, yet without sin. If you want a man who is sinful, who was born in sin, whose, whose righteousness is filthy rags in the sight of God, if you want that man representing you on judgment day, you go right ahead. I'll not be joining you in that. Only Jesus, only Jesus can save you. Let us therefore, the Bible said, verse 16, 4 and 16 of Hebrews, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, I can come boldly to the throne of grace. Why do I need a man? I don't, and neither do you. In Romans 10, 8 through 9, it's this simple. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You're on your way. Again, where do I need man? Where do I need an altar? Says nothing about an altar. Says nothing about a man here. We need to wake up. We need to realize who the real Jesus is here. What to say? For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus or another gospel, 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, come on. That's how you get another Jesus. That's how you get another gospel. Let me tell you something, folks. We, we, we talked about the vine. We talked about being grafted in as the Gentiles. We talked about being snotty-nosed kids with what God gave us. We have gathered these blessings for ourselves. We have become proud and arrogant. And I'm telling you what, I, I love James Wilson. We play that song every time I start. I love that song. I love the spirit about that song. I love how he does that song. And, and, and I love Charity Gale. And, and these, these folks are blessed and I'm blessed by them. But I'm telling you right now, folks, we have moved away from God so far that he is now giving C.C. Winan the Holy Ghost song. I'm excited about that song. 
When C.C. Winans' album brings me to worship every bit as much as James Wilson and Charity Gale, I'd say something's happening in the kingdom today. I'd say something's happening. We, 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 we should recognize, we should be a little afraid when we see those things happening. The church is not greater than the Savior of the church. The altar is not greater than the gift on the altar. My friend, if we, if we do not wake up, he said Romans 1 and 21, their foolish hearts were darkened. Their foolish hearts was darkened. That's pretty scary. That is scary. And I just hope, I hope that we can get a hold of something here. I as well bring bring this this song up real quick. And I want people to know that he's your savior. He wants to be your savior, your Lord, and your best friend. Everything you need is in him. And for every stage of life, or no matter what you're going through, hope is in Jesus. Cece, I love that. Let's listen to one of those songs now. contagious it's it's this song is full of passion and i pray that it will start a revival the church of jesus christ is in need of a revival so we need to be refilled with the holy ghost and fire so that those who don't know right, jesus everyone. will come to know We're him here, and those of us who do will begin watching. to spread and the love of god and the i just fire pray that, that everywhere we go we can get back to the real jesus, jesus. Acts 2 and 1 says when the day of here we go 